I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Duane, and this week we're focused on food security in the United Arab Emirates. In a country where crops struggle to grow given the harsh environment and water scarcity, we'll find out from the UAE's Minister for Food Security whether we're at crisis point. Later in the show, we'll get our hands dirty down on local farms which are sprouting up in a bid to help the Emirates rely less on imported food. But first, it's estimated that around a third of all the food produced globally is wasted, and here in the UAE, it's a key concern at all stages of the supply chain. Another pressing issue is how to secure access to sufficient and nutritious food. Food consumption in the UAE is growing at an annual rate of more than 4%, and it's predicted that the population will swell from just over 9 million to more than 11 million by 2030. These factors, combined with the desert country having an extreme climate, almost no rainfall, plus a very limited water supply and arable land, presents the government with a big challenge. It's one they say they're meeting head-on, with the launch this month of a future food security strategy. On the to-do list is developing local agriculture and, with it, new technologies. Reducing food loss across the supply chain and food waste at consumer levels are also top tasks, with a set goal of 75% of all food being recycled by 2021. The UAE supermarket shelves are densely packed with non-perishable goods and fresh produce from foreign shores, with imports accounting for around 80 to 90%, which leaves the domestic market susceptible to so-called food shocks, where crops can fail, supplies can be compromised and prices fluctuate. With this in mind, the government says it will strive to diversify its food sources in the years ahead, whilst hoping to improve the nutritional intake of its population at the same time. Charged with meeting all the government's food objectives is Her Excellency Maryam bint Mohammed Saeed Hareb Al Maheri, who was appointed Minister of State for Food Security less than a year ago. She took time to speak to Inspire about the challenges and opportunities currently facing the country. Your Excellency, a very warm welcome to Inspire Middle East. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for having me here. Let me pick up on food shocks to start with. Where do we stand? Because the majority of poultry, for example, is sourced from Brazil. Yeah. A lot of the rice comes from India and Pakistan. Yes. Should there be geopolitical or even other concerns, be it weather or force majeure, how do we handle that in the UAE? For us, it's really important to build the alliances with other countries and be able to source certain food items which we know are strategic foods from not just one country but from a number of countries. Uh, this lessens the, the risk as well because by uh, 2050 we will need 70% more food for the, the global population than, than now and also the climate change effects as well. To import less and to have more homegrown produce is a key priority for the government. Do you ever foresee a time when the UAE might start exporting that produce too? I hope to see that happening. The whole idea of, of uh, using the technologies to actually be able to grow in, arid, in an arid country like the UAE where we have water scarcity. Um, this is the major challenge we have to overcome, but I believe that once we really advance R&D in this field, we could actually start doing this. But how do you compete on price with local organic products being quite a lot more expensive than imported products from the likes of Australia and Europe, for example? Rebecca, it all comes down to the taste as well and the consumer's awareness. So uh, when the consumer actually tastes, for example, a piece of kale that comes from a vertical farm compared to a, pro a, pro a product or a piece that comes from imports, they can actually taste the difference of the freshness. The food is much more nutritious when it just comes from just a few minutes of being harvested than the produce that's been already gone around the world. There are some critics who might say that we're overfed and undernourished. Yes. Isn't it the government's responsibility to label food to make people yes. have informed decisions? Absolutely. One of the strategic directions are also to look at uh, the um, improving the nutritional intake um, of the UAE population. Soon where we kind of have like a traffic light labeling system. Uh, so when you're looking at sugars, fats, uh, salt, uh, calories, you have a traffic light labeling, meaning when something's red, it means eat less of this. When something's green, it means this is okay to have. 
more of in, in your diet. I want to pick up on the topic of food wastage. How high on the list of priorities is that for the government to address? Because it's not just the food and beverage and hospitality sector, it's households, isn't it, yes. with the lack of recycling? If we look at a global picture, wow. one third of the food produced globally is wasted. Therefore, it's a strategic direction on its own in our strategy. That's how important it is. So we'll be looking at programs in reducing food waste or food loss throughout the supply chain, as well as food waste on a consumer level. So it's very high priority on our agenda. In terms of research and development, talk to me about the food valley that you have plans for. Is this a first in the region? What's the big idea? Basically, it comes from the Silicon Valley in the US, where you have the IT technologies or IT startups sprouting and, and developing into commercial uh, giants. Uh, so this idea is what we want to bring to the UAE and basically build a food valley all about food technologies. So we want to become a, a tech hub for technologies for uh, regions as ourselves where there's uh, water scarcity, for example, as a huge challenge. So you're looking for innovators, tech entrepreneurs yes, in the agri yes. space. How do they get involved? So we need to enable them or give them the platforms that they need to come. We need to incentivize packages. Um, uh, we've also uh, launched an uh, urban farm competition. This sort of excites also uh, um, the youth and the next generation farmers to come and really showcase their, their ideas of how, uh, how they could do a uh, closed system farm. Uh, whether it be in the city or on the outskirts of the city or in their buildings, um, we're giving that uh, freedom of, of choice. Minister, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time with Euronews. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. As the UAE strives to reduce its reliance on imported food, farmers are coming up with creative ideas of how to grow produce in the desert. Salim El Saeed went along to find out how they are reaping the rewards of alternative agriculture. Hot and humid is not the ideal environment for growing plants. Yet Emjad, a Syrian farmer in the UAE, produces a variety of salad vegetables and a selection of herbs in the inhospitable climate of the region. How? Using a hydroponic farming system, which is an innovative method of growing plants without soil using a liquid nutrient solution. Chilled water runs through these insulating tubes to nourish plants like this Boston lettuce. Grown in a fibrous material made from crushed rock called rock wool, which holds water like a sponge, and once used up, that same water drains back to be filtered, recycled, and used all over again. Using alternative farming systems has saved Amjad around 90% of the water he would have used farming with traditional methods. Hydroponics, combined with a vertical farming rotatory field, a stackable and rotating farm bed with 18 rows, has also saved him space, allowing him to be located closer to the city and deliver produce to stores quicker reducing the farm's environmental footprint. That's a rotatory greenhouse which, which we apply in 2005. is our first, first rotatory greenhouse applied in all the Middle East, and uh, it's the largest one in all this area. Due to a rotatory system, if you are going to, to plant in the same uh, areas for uh, traditional agriculture, it needs around six times uh, like this one. The Emirates Hydroponics Farm is about two hectares large. Around the size of two rugby fields, Emjad is able to produce about 500,000 lettuce plants, including nine varieties and two million herbs each year. Like Emjad, many UAE-based farmers grow their crops on marginal land, meaning it has low agricultural worth due to factors like poor soil, little fresh water, and harsh temperatures. And since the UAE is limited to the variety and quantity of crops it can grow on its land, the country depends heavily on imports from countries in South America, Europe and Southeast Asia. Working to find homegrown solutions in the UAE and other marginal environments is the International Center for Biosaline Agriculture. They're exploring ways to get the most out of scarce resources like fresh water. If we think about seawater, you think we are very rich in water because we do have sea, we do have lots of saline water. So what if we can use saline water to produce crops? Examples of crops that are both salt and heat tolerant include quinoa and mustard plants. The ICBA is also using integrated aquaculture to use naturally salty groundwater to the very last drop. It is first desalinated, or has the salt removed, to produce fresh water for farming. And it also produces brine, a highly concentrated salt water which is used to farm fish. In a separate operation, 
different vats of the brine water are enriched with the fish's waste products and used to fertilize a sea bean-like vegetable like salicornia. Another growing trend in regional agriculture is precision farming, which gives the plants the exact amount of what they need. The date palms requires about 50 liters a day in winter time and about 150 in the summer time. Whereas if you talk to any farmer, they provide more than 300 liters a day per tree. So what you do with precision agriculture is that you have information to the farmers that you don't need to give them more than 50, but also you have sensors to make sure that the irrigation stops at a certain time. This type of smart farming, where drones with sensors are used to measure the plant's humidity and hydration, is being applied in a variety of ways in the UAE. And the country is also planning to build the world's largest vertical farm later this year. On top of that, Mostar City, a sustainable development in the desert of Abu Dhabi, plans to test smart home farms, plus keep looking at ways to better conserve energy and water nationwide. Well, that's all we have time for this week. And don't forget, you can catch all of our episodes online at urinews.com. But before I leave you, here are some UAE gardening enthusiasts sharing their favorite snaps on social media. Priyanka from India is following her grandmother's advice of eating seasonally rather than just organically by sampling locally grown cherry tomatoes. Celebrating her own new harvest of homegrown organic radishes and cucumbers is UAE-based Russian Vitalia. And Dubai resident Gauri from India found this ornamental pineapple in her garden, commenting that it was simply too cute to eat.